Hello and welcome everyone to episode 111 of One Piece at a Time, the One Piece read-through podcast where we read and discuss five chapters of the One Piece manga each and every week. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host and freelance letterer at Shonen Jump, Brandon Bovia. How you doing, Brandon? I'm doing pretty good. I'm, of course, uh, Brandon Bovia, letterer of manga like Kaiju Number 8 and Dragon Ball Super. Uh, and that second one, I think, is a, is a little bit important this time, unfortunately. Yeah, so this is our first recording ever since we learned of the unfortunate passing of Akira Toriyama. And uh, if you've been listening to this podcast a while, you might realize that we mentioned Toriyama quite a bit more than anything else because he is sort of the progenitor progenitor of a lot of modern shonen manga. And obviously Oda was directly inspired by him. To yeah, the point, huge and, fan. Yeah, exactly. He, you know remembers meeting him we got a wonderful i guess uh letter or just a statement from oda talking about toriyama and I, I, everybody really grabbed onto the idea of like i hope the afterlife is as wonderful as you depicted it and i yes. I, th- I think that's a pretty great se- uh sentiment for sure yeah there's definitely as much as i am you know just like heartbroken over the whole thing and you know god i you know i certainly wouldn't be here without his work uh for a lot of reasons but like i was it it made me feel good knowing that like like we like everybody kind of came together to like celebrate his life and his work and i thought that that was really wonderful yeah the 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 way people have come together and just shown fan art and uh influence and stuff the tor you know lesser known toriyama trivia and just how much of effect an effect the man has had on the wider world of manga and anime has been heartwarming really if, if there's any sort of positive takeaway from all of this, it's, it's just, like, seeing all of, like, the positivity and the outpouring of love. And, like, I, I guess it's one of those things where, you know, like, manga is still a relatively young, like, industry, you know, less mm. than 100 years, really. So, like, you know, the fact that we had such a influential creator, you know, you know, a complete game changer, you know, I feel like, <laughs> like, unarguably one of the greatest of all time. And, you know, we oh. had him for so long. Um, and that's like, I, I feel like it's, we don't get, we don't have that too many of those, you know, mm-hmm. um, and so that he was, he was a living legend, you know, the phrase living legend, I think could not apply to anybody any more appropriate and his, yeah. you know. Just, I mean, one of the common complaints for Toriyama is that you, you know, his designs kind of repeated a lot for certain characters. Like you see a Dragon Quest character is like, ah, that looks like. Goku or whatever, or you look at Luca from Chrono Trigger is like, well, that kind of looks like Bulma, uh, that type of idea. But it says something about his style that they were still all iconic. It. Iconic. It's extremely yeah. recognizable and iconic. Like you, it's you see the those Toriyama style. Yeah, yeah. I saw. Uh, oh my goodness! I saw one thing uh, on. Uh, I, I saw this on Twitter of like somebody showed a a magazine cover of Shonen Jump the week before Doctor Slump. Uh, debuted and it was like kind of a bunch of different characters from a bunch of different manga but like they all had like the same face like the same sort of stereotypical like uh 80s anime face you know big big bushy eyebrows and you know stuff like that uh and so it was literally just like oh my god yeah like even even at that point you know his arrival changed the game and the, the fact that like no i feel like nobody's really like everybody can try to imitate the toriyama style but like he he is a singular force. Like he's a mm-hmm. singular manga artist that I think really just like changed the look of anime and manga and video games. Good lord, forever! Oh yeah, it's it's funny. You have all the, like you have these muscle bound men and all that, and here comes Toriyama with his with Doctor Slump, which is just about a cute robot girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely yeah, exactly. different style. It is it upends the game so much. And honestly, uh, as somebody who's uh, you know been slowly getting through the uh, Dragon Quest series. It is fascinating, to especially look at early Dragon Quest artwork because you like Dragon Quest One, Dragon Quest Two, Dragon Quest Three, and then he, you know, you have those remakes that come in later with uh, the, the the Super Nintendo games and beyond, and even like later versions like the cell phone games where those characters are redesigned, and you can s- see the eras of Toriyama. Like it's exactly, never because yeah, he was making he was working on Dragon Ball for like most of that, right? Yes, he was. He was. Yeah, I think if I remember, if my memory serves me correctly. I think he was in the Red Ru- Rib- the Red Ribbon Army arc when Dragon Quest One first came out. 
Wow. So yeah. just, to, just to give a timeline of that whole thing. But yeah, it, it, it's really fascinating just to see how his artwork evolves, but still very, being very much Toriyama. And it's hard to say whether any other manga artist can just reach that same level of iconicness as he did, where everybody like looks at that style and just like, yes, that's them. I think there are, you know, there are a few because there, you have those character work uh, that you, you'd see on Twitter a lot where it's like, here's this character in this style, in this style, in this style. And it did, you know, here's the Toriyama one, yeah, and here's then you the can recognize Hero it. one, and you can recognize it to a degree. Yeah. But I don't know. I think to have it yeah. instantly recognizable, like Oda might get there, but I think that might be because a lot of people look at Oda's artwork initially and be like, those characters are weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I guess it's just one of those things where very few manga artists have that sort of like world spanning, like we would live in a different world if it were not for Toriyama's work on Dragon Quest and Dragon Ball. Like we, we just would anime and manga wouldn't have blown up across the world the way that it did, especially, you know, you know, obviously we're both Americans, but you know, Dragon Ball is very huge in like Mexico and stuff and just all, all over the world. You know, that yeah. it's, it's crazy. Just like, I, I think about how much joy his work has brought to millions of people across the world. And I'm just like, that is a, like a net positive for the world. And mm -hmm. I just, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we could wax poetic about Toriyama for, ages but we are ostensibly here to talk about one piece but we just wanted to you know yeah you know we have to recognize it you, know, you recognize greatness and you gotta you gotta mention it when it's yeah. something as big as that happens and of course i don't i don't want to take it for granted at all i, I try to make sure you know I, I keep my head out of the clouds but working on dragon ball is like one of my life's greatest pleasures <laughs> it is it is an honor as somebody who is a fan you know from a very young age that like that that changed the trajectory of my life and I think being able to sort of give back and and sort of like my career would not be what it is and just like my skills as a as a letterer of manga like you know Dragon Ball really was like I think where things started started uh, to change yeah absolutely so yeah <laughs> that's that's really all we can say about that but there's a lot to talk about when it comes to this set of chapters, like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, we had a dense week. Yeah, I remember I messaged you. I was like, I've just read two chapters. And it's just like, oh, no, we are. This is a lot. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a good bit to talk about. Uh, before we get properly started, though, we should mention, though, uh, you are on a uh, if you're if you're curious about or if you have noticed, Brandon has a diff somewhat different audio quality this time around. Uh, he's fortunately his main uh, mic is on the fritz a bit so he's on a backup mic uh it should yeah. still be mostly good but you know it, there is a bit of a difference yeah for sure yeah so don't 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 be like oh I'm, like am i going crazy or you know what, what happened to brandon <laughs> is he sick uh remains to be seen whether or not i can figure out what the heck happened to my old mic or if this is just how i'm gonna have to rock it for a while so eh, we'll see yeah <laughs> Uh, here's hoping, but uh, either way, uh, we should get to One Piece, and oh my gosh, there's so much to talk about. Yeah, let's do it. Chapter 496, Yaruki Man Gro Mangrove, and uh, we see CP9 has arrived in St. Poplar, the town of the Spring Queen. However, they don't have any money to get, fix up Rob Lucci, so uh, they're still yeah. in a bit of trouble. Jumping ahead a little bit, but like I had no idea that this cover story was going to be about like we're broke, <laughs> we need money to put <laughs> Rob Lucci at a hospital. That is hilarious. Yeah, we're we're not used to getting paid. <laughs> we, yeah, we just like supplemented by the government. <laughs> yeah, no, that is that is not the framing I thought they were uh, gonna go with for this, but it's great. Uh, the other thing I wanted to note real quick, I was like, the, the chapter of this title, we'll, we'll get to what a Yarukiman Mangrove is in a second, but I did want, I want to double check. So like Yarukiman, or so it's based on a, a Japanese phrase, Yarukiman Man, which basically means to be uh, like motivated. Oh, uh, okay. And so I was like, oh, it's surprising that they didn't uh, figure out a translation for it. So in, but in the English dub of the anime, they are called uh, Hustle Muscle Mangroves, which I just think is great. Hustle Muscle Mangroves. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's kind of amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it kind of felt like there might be still a little bit more to, left of the whole flying fish riders thing. Uh, oh yeah, we just skip right past that. No, it's like, oh no, no, Sanji hitting uh, Duval in the face, that's it. We're just, <laughs> we're back on the sunny and 
everybody I thought I missed a chapter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no, we thought it was like, geez, what did we, what did we miss? But no, we're just with uh, Haji and he's f- serving up those octopus fritters. And again, I've never had an octopus fritter. I'm not a seafood guy, but my God, they always make them look so freaking delicious. They're pretty good. Oh my goodness. I, I definitely, I love this interaction with but Hachi, who is, of course, you know, he's, he's cooking for everybody. He, he, he clearly feels very awkward around Nami. So he asks her, you know, how is it? How does it taste? And then, you know, she kind of gives him that look, you know, he's like, I don't forgive you, but, you know, it's delicious. And you just see that smile on her face. And mm-hmm. he's just he's just so happy to hear that. Yeah, it, it, it's a wonderful sort of, I don't know, bonding experience. And you see, you, you, yeah, obviously exactly. you have Luffy stuffing his face and Sanji so impressed. It's like, how does how do you get this sauce so rich? How do you make this uh, taste so good? Yeah, I love that Sanji is even just kind of like, uh, you know, he doesn't even know what's going on here. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's it, something about cooking that he doesn't know. And I love that, you know, the, Hachi has his own boat to make his taki, takoyaki. That, yeah. That's, that's cute. So, yeah, it, it, I love how you have those five over there, but Frankie, Robin, and Zoro just chowing down over on, on the sunny and have those to go carts for it yeah <laughs> but uh, as they're eating all of a sudden here comes handsome i mean duvall <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> rocking so, a new look and i'm sure if you're reading this for the first time you're like what the hell happened uh yeah so you remember the uh noodle nose guy from enos lobby that was only temporary but sanji made sure he was determined that this plastic surgery that he just gave this man this entire bone restructuring uh would make him so they don't look like each other ever again yeah. <laughs> not would yeah, be reminded. Well, i love well, one i've just you know of, of course the the famous spongebob quote oh no he's hot <laughs> <laughs> is, is what i think about but then also like you know, he's trying to thank the Straw Hats, you know, and he's telling them, like, all right, I'm going to go back to the countryside, take it easy. You know, I wanted to thank you, but I was feeling so guilty. And then, you know, he's like, he's trying to wink, but, like, he's not used to his new face. So it just, like, <laughs> it has this little, like, crumbly little star coming off. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's ostensibly ha- handsome, but he's also not. <laughs> yeah, I-, I love that. Like, he's handsome and it worked, but, like, he's got to get used to it. <laughs> and then, you know, Sanji's just like, you know, never show your face in front of us ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just so vain now that it just yeah. messes with everybody. Where Nami's just wiping her mouth. Like, the probably the least cute could she could ever be because she's just, like, you know, chomping down on food and wiping her mouth of all the sauce. And he's like, oh, you just, I just, you blew a kiss at me. It's like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just wiping my yeah, mouth. yep. <laughs> oh my god oh man yeah well the the benefit of all of this as he tries to wink again you know he's like all right you know here's my transponder stale number you know so he's like we, we got something out of this whole like excursion yeah we got a <laughs> contact then, at the very least <laughs> yeah and now he's you know he's, he's renamed his group to the rosy life writers <laughs> <laughs> i just there's something about like I feel like there are very few characters in One Piece where, like, the entire Straw Hat crew is just like, oh, God, not that guy. <laughs> they are all united in their, like, oh, man, this guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> They're just tired of him. And yeah. uh, Luffy has gone into his fat form. He is uh, completely satisfied. Brooke, I, I, we do have this wonderful, this continuing gag where Brooke is just like, ah, truly a splendid afternoon. Most delightful. Borp. <laughs> just borp. Yeah. The, see, I think the contrast between like the gentlemanly high class and then, you know, he just like lets a big one rip. Like, I think I think in this context, like that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, some of the stuff, you know, when, uh, in his introduction uh, was a little a little grating to me, but I, that, that got a laugh out of me. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, and there's just, you know, there's something just cute about Hachi being wiped out from cooking. It's like, man, I needed six more arms and Cammy's just delighted and cleaning up. And uh, they're like, all right, hey, come up on deck and we're going to rest and, and, and hang out. And this is where we learn about how the heck you actually get to Fishman Island. Right. Yeah. So turns out you actually do have to go to Sabaudi Archipelago. Because while the fishmen and mermaids could dive in and be there in no time, uh, the water pressure would absolutely kill them. So Papagoo here explains there's two ways to actually get into the new world. One is by asking the world government, because it turns out the sacred land of Mary Joa is right on top of the red line. Mm-hmm. And there's no way to pass. In fact, there's no way to get your boats across. So what you have to do is leave your ship behind 
and buy a similar one on the other side, which of course upsets Frankie. Yeah, fr- yeah, Frankie's like, <laughs> how dare they? Yeah, that no, that's 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 not that's not an option. But you do get to keep your ship for the route you'll be taking, the seafloor route through right through Fishman Island. But it's pretty dangerous because there's sea monsters, there's Neptunians, they eat up the whole thing, fish, uh, you know, ship and all. So they're asking, okay, how the heck do we get our ship underwater? Like, what do we do with this? That's sort of the, the, the sort of that thing they have to figure out. But it turns out Fishman Island is directly under Mary Joa because there's a big hole in the red line that you pass through. We'll come back to this. Um, and I, I can't even say for certainty that is, that is an important detail. Just, just, just remember that, that Fishman Island is directly under Mary Joa. I, I think that will be important later. I can't remember how, but I'm going to I'll take your word for it because I, I honestly yeah. can't. Remember. Well, I don't. We don't know 100% like why, but like that is that is not like a that's something I think that is. A, yeah, yeah, not a coincidence. There you mm. go. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> huh. It's interesting because it's like, okay, so Fishman Island is 30,000 feet below. And they're like, wait, wasn't there Sky Island 30,000 feet up in the sky? Like, we, what's with the 30,000? <laughs> that feels like it is also going to come back later. I think I, I have no evidence to support that. But the fact that they are like exact or not exactly, but, you know, like oh, 30,000 above, 30,000 below, you know, maybe that means something. That, that, that feels like a too weird of a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's yeah. so hard to tell. But that's my theory hat talking. Though. I, I had no idea. <laughs> But uh, that's the plan. They got to get a special coating for the Sunny in order to make it actually down into Fishman Island. So now they got to head to Sabaudi Archipelago and they arrive and it's filled with bubbles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, real quick, th- this doesn't I don't know where people got the, the spelling. Like, I think every translation uh, spells it like Sabaudi um, and it's based on the Japanese word for shabon, which means bubble, but um, like, oh. I don't like, it's, it's a stretch. Like, I don't know, like, that's, huh. Like, like the way it's pronounced in Japanese, I think it's like shabondi, like you, you hear it and you're like, okay, yeah. But like, it's spelled in English, like sab, sabaori, and that's that's how it's pronounced in, uh, even in the dub, I double checked. But it's I've it's one of those things that's like- I always struggle with that pronunciation. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a weird word and it's a weird phrase. And it's, it's not even like a, I think that's how Oda spells it when when it shows up in English. So that that like is in in no uncertain terms the spelling across like multiple translations. But it's just like why? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's weird. So just know that it's based on the Japanese word for bubble. Huh. No, I yeah. I, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, the the got we find out that the island itself makes these bubbles. And, of course, they get worried about the log post. It's like, oh, it's a, is it going to get rewritten? Do we need to worry about it? It's like, oh, no, 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 don't worry about it. Uh, the archipelago is not an island. It's just a clump of trees, so there's no magnetic force here. There, it's actually a series of gigantic mangroves, or trees that, you know, rise above the water, whose roots are above or under the water. But they're always above here, and it's a collection of the world's largest mangroves, the Ruk- your Yorukimon mangroves. And, and I, I pointed that out earlier because Luffy's like, that's they sound manly. <laughs> <laughs> Which I didn't get at first, but I'm like, all right, I yeah. guess because of the man man. But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, it, it feels very much like every time we go to a new island and try to figure it out because we didn't get that with Thriller Bark because it was just a scary ship it turns out in the grand scheme there's no history or anything involved to it because well it's a ship but here like a sky island like water seven we learn about how this place works and it's like oh there's a 79 trees each tree has a town or some facilities and there's 79 all together which is what makes up the archipelago so yeah they're just it's it's just massive and they end up parking At Grove 41, so don't forget your number. It's, it's your <laughs> don't forget spot. this number, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a big old parking garage. <laughs> but it, does, it does kind of feel like that. But as soon as they get there, they see one of the bubbles come out of the roots, and uh, Luffy jumps on top of it and can actually ride it and decides to just start jumping up into the sky. So I love this bit because yeah, um, Robin, you know, it's like she kind of. She's like, oh, it's a it's a natural resin, or Papagoo's explaining it. She's like, oh, it's sticky. She tries to wipe it on Usopp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 you don't get that many, like, physical gags with Robin, so it's nice to have. Right, yeah, exactly. It's it's so casual. <laughs> Just... mm. <laughs> but yeah, the resin makes it so it doesn't easily pop, and Lu- uh, Luffy's able to ride up there. 
and uh, he's like, oh, hey, there's an amusement park. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's the Melody Park. It's, if, you know, and Cammy's like, oh, I've always wanted, I've always dreamed of riding on one. It's interesting how Chopper's like, uh, well, why don't you just ride one? And meanwhile, Papa Goo's like, don't be silly. He's like, hmm. he's like we don't know what that means quite yet, but. No, but we do find out. the reason why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So there's a coding. Sp- the reason they're here is that there's a coding specialist and they need to have him coat, coat it in this resin uh, so it can sh- sail underwater. Yeah, it's the only way for humans to go. But the, if the coding isn't done just right, the ship and the crew will be crushed underwater and die. But hey, this, <laughs> I, I trust this guy. So, yeah, that's dangerous. <laughs> but there's also a stipulation. It's like, OK, we're going to go. We're going to do this. But you got to understand something. There are world nobles that walk around town. The residents of Mary Joa, no matter what happens, do not defy these world nobles. Even if they kill somebody right in front of you, pretend you don't see a thing. And that's how we end the chapter. It's like, oh, <laughs> this took a De- turn. Yeah, that definitely took a turn. I, we know what we know what happens with this crew <laughs> when you tell them to do something. So, I'm sure I'm sure everything will be just fine. Oh yeah, this this is gonna go so well. <laughs> yeah, it's completely smooth. We do have an SBS. Uh, only one of real note is uh, how laundry is handled with the crew where it, the girls and the guys each do their own laundry. The girls, since they change clothes all the time, wash their laundry once a day while the guys eh, do it once a week. Cause it's just like, they don't change their clothes as often and yeah, <laughs> they just have a big enough. washathon together. So they don't change clothes that, <laughs> uh, that often. <laughs> Again, day in the life of the straw hats. Yeah. All right. Let's get to chapter 497, Adventure on the Archipelago of Dancing Soap Bubbles. And we, as you said, the theme, let's raise some money. First up is Kumidori performing a raise money for medical expenses dance. And he even has memories of his mom nearby. (laughs) Isn't that the the same bit he did during one of his fights? Yeah, it totally was. (laughs) He still looks so weird. (laughs) He he does. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm I'm all for this uh, cover story though. I just I love this concept so much. I, I know <laughs> these totally threatening guys having to just dance for money, basically. Yep. We uh, split up the crew, of course, because of course. gotta yeah. have somebody protect the ship. So Sanji, Usopp, and Frankie are staying behind. Frankie because he uh, wants to uh, repair the ship and needs he needs to do some maintenance because it got scratched up. Usopp because he's going to help, uh, which is I. God, I love the bond. I didn't. I never thought about it before. All the, before the. It feels like podcast. a kind of master and student almost. Yeah, you you really do get the bond between Frankie and Usopp, and it's it's never one I thought about too much until we started doing this. Same, same. But then of course we have Sanji staying behind because Nami was like, "Oh no, the ship is full of treasure. Whatever shall we do? I wish I had a handsome knight to protect it." And he's just like, "I'm your man." <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm a slave to love. Doing a. <laughs> Weird little disco pose. <laughs> uh, but then Zoro hops off and just starts going off on his own. He's like, no, no. Yeah. Don't <laughs> leave. Punch, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> we're we're never going to find you if you get lost. It is too big. So it's like, he's like, hey, who's going to get lost on an island like this? Each tree has a number on it. So I could just ask somebody how to get back to it. There's there's no way I can lose this. It's like, huh. All right. Yeah, you, you're a good point. We got this. Yeah, yeah. I love that they're kind of really like... You know, even Sanji's like, I misjudged you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love this. I laugh so hard at this gag. So, yeah. I just need to remember that this tree is number one. And there's a bubble right in front of it that floats away. It's like, it's 41. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> so there goes Zoro for the rest of the arc. Yep. <laughs> He's we, gone. <laughs> we've completely lost Zoro. So <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Just right off the bat. <laughs> just, just an immediate. Oh, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. We learn a little bit more about these world nobles. Others call them the celestial dragons, who are so arrogant that they wear helmets to avoid breathing the air of common people. Basically, there's a lot of rules. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, it's one of the last stops on the New World. So everyone passes through here. Infamous pirates, navy, bounty hunters, chasing pirates, human traffickers. If the human traffickers catch you, they'll sell you and the law pro- pro- uh, won't protect you. So don't do anything that might make you stand out. And Luffy's just like, hey, why are you... You just get a bump on your head, you're covering up your, your forehead. And he's like, oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's fascinating to me because... um. 
I think they'll explicitly say it slightly later, but oh, oh no no no, it's it's right on the same page. Where yeah, they're they're basically trying to look as human as possible. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Hachi's got like he's got a you know like a jacket on uh, basically. Yeah, I I love this yeah. jacket though because it has an eight on the back. He only uh, he only has the one arm, you know, the top set of arms coming out, but the buttons yep. are all octopus shaped. Yeah, so it's just like who you're really fooling there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> but, but exactly. I I don't even think they explicitly pointed out and I pointed it out with the last time we saw Fishman uh, in the last episode but he but Hachi makes the point to cover up his son tattoo which yes <laughs> well we'll we'll get to that <laughs> yeah that's that well, that'll be eventually <laughs> also I love like I'm totally human my mouth just extends out which you know considering the designs of certain one piece characters yeah you know, I, I, I can see him not standing out <laughs> yeah I guess it's like you just roll with it, you know. <laughs> mm. I guess that's enough to go like, oh, is that guy human? Yeah, sure, I guess. Why we not? have a skeleton walking behind him. It's fine. Right, yeah. <laughs> and a reindeer. <laughs> it's like, this is yep. not the weirdest thing. <laughs> that's uh, their breakdown of what they need to do. And uh, we start learning about these bubbles and some transportation options around here where they're able to slowly push their self through the bubble and actually climb inside and if they attach a basically a motor scooter, a pedal, a paddle system, they can run around in this thing and actually travel by bubble. Yeah. And I love, well, I love, first off, this is just like when they got to Skypea, just like when they got to Water 7. We're, we're learning all these little, like, the ways of life of the society, you know, like, it, it almost feels like Oda, you know, he designed like a concept for a place and is like, okay, now, like, how, how do people get around, you know, what are how do they kind of build their society around this? And I just, I love these like really meaty world building chapters. Like every time we get to a new place, it's like, we're learning more just about like how people kind of live their lives with this kind of weird, whatever weird concept they live around. Yeah. And the yeah. other thing that uh, that really marks it differently than those previous two arcs where they're going over the society is there's this ever present sense of something's off. About it's a little sleazy. Place. Yeah, it's very sleazy because like rental is five hundred berries a day, but you can buy one for ten thousand berries. Buy one for ten thousand berries, which is so cheap, huh? And Chachi's like, no, 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 don't. There's no point in buying one. A rental is fine. So, uh, so why? Like, why? Uh, I'll tell you later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's when we get the explanation after they've all gotten their. Again, I love this the different variations where uh, Nami is riding on top of one, and you can have a, a, a almost a raft version for it. By the way, I love the dress that uh, the, the Cammy's wearing to cover up her, her fins. Yeah, it makes her seem pretty stylish. But yeah, as Hachi explains, like, hey, you remember when you were jumping on all those bubbles at the top? Remember how they popped at the, like? And we have a flashback to something we didn't see before. It's like, oh right, I got above the trees and I thought I could go higher, but then the bubble started popping. And he's like, well, that's because uh, you left Sabodi's climate. The climate here is adapted to the Yarukimon mangrove. So if you leave that climate, the bubble re- resin loses its force and dissipates. So if you buy a bike, you're wasting your money because they're just not going to work outside of here. It's a tourist trap. It's a tourist it's so trap. Good. <laughs> yeah. It, again, it really does show like there between like, oh, yeah, you got to watch out for the human traffickers and you got to yeah. watch out for these guys scamming you on how these bubble things work so it's like huh it, it definitely it feels yeah really like kind of scummy in a way that like like water seven you know uh even initially skypea other than other than the, the entry the, the the part where they're at the gate you know mm-hmm. once they got inside they were very welcoming uh but this just like right out the gate is like no this is <laughs> oh it's it's a little it's a little seedy yeah so we also learned that bubble bikes uh work in on fishman island so we want to run around in there and we get a mention from Papagoo about the mermaid princess, who's a real, uh, real looker. And hey, I'm a starfish. So I'm a, if I'm saying it, uh, she's good looking. You know it's true. <laughs> so I can introduce <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, and then we get Grumman, Grand Line Manju buns. And it, it's, it, you're right. It literally is a tourist trap where they just buy a bunch of food and they buy a pennant and a keychain and rice crackers and chocolate, which are just like the most touristy things you, you can get in Japan. Japan. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's funny how there is kind of like a there's there's like a darker twist on it, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It, it just seems designed to take advantage of things. I think it's at this point correct that they split up. Where the girl, 
Yes, the girls uh, yeah. leave to go to the mall. They found a mall because they saw a hotel. It looks like there was a mall. So like they were going to uh, go to the shopping mall and uh, let the others take care of the coding, which, boy, that they are putting a lot of trust in uh, Hachi. <laughs> because Yeah, yeah, yeah they were just like, all right. <laughs> Chopper, Brooke, us. and Luffy being one of the ones taking care of the coding. It's like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they just need to find the guy. And the girls are just wondering, I was like, I wonder why Cammy didn't want to go with us. So, hmm. But you learn a little bit more about that and they get, get some racing in and that's when they come across a man basically like, I, I'm begging you, please. I don't want to die. Just get this car collar off of me. I won't do any harm. I've given up on the new world. I've got a wife and child back home. I want to go back. And then Hachi's like, don't get involved. He was probably a pirate who got caught and sold by human traffickers, which is just Jesus. Yeah. His master brought him here and then he ran away, but he knows he can't escape. And he talks about the collar and all of a sudden the collar just explodes on him. Just yep. brutally messes him up. And uh, it's like slaves wear collars tied to a chain. If you break the chain and run, the collar explodes. <laughs> He's still like, I'm, I'm laughing because it's, it's hilariously dark. Oh, it is amazingly dark. Like it is. Yeah. Like I said, on the surface, it just seems like a happy go lucky place. But then you get but you have these elements that Oda slowly slipping in. Yeah, and this is I mean, the we, we heard about the reveal. human traffickers, and yeah, I, I feel like I was thinking about this after I had read this set of chapters. I feel like the darkest aspects of One Piece are usually in like the flashbacks with like the Straw Hats, where it's like you really get a sense of like kind of how messed up this world is, um, just by how like the people you know like the people who've lived in it and like the mm. kinds of horrible things that can happen. But it is. It was mostly framed as something of the past, and I feel like in the present, it was a very kind of, like, fantastical and grandiose sort of, you know, like, you know, thinking about someone like Enaru, you know, who he was basically trying to, like, he was going to destroy Sky Island, but, you know, that feels more fanciful and fantastical, or even something like what, um, like, Crocodile, and, and certainly when they, you know, like, attacked the real government uh, in his lobby, but this is just straight up, like, a slave trying to escape. <laughs> and yeah. He, his collar explodes just right in front of Luffy's eyes. It, it, it hits different to me. It, it does, especially because they're like, we've got to help him. It's like, no, don't, ha don't, don't help him. Uh, Luffy, get off your bubble bike. There, there might be a celestial dragon nearby. Don't move. And mm -hmm. that's when we see a guy with a giant ax <laughs> mentioning like, ah, that was devil Dia Dias of the Akumate pirates worth 60 million never made it. And he, did that, never, he, he would have never made it in the new world. Yeah. He never made it. Yeah, so, which, you know what? Fair enough. <laughs> 60 million. Yeah. And Hachi's like, Luffy, get on your knees. Don't make eye contact and don't touch the pet dog. The celestial dragons are right behind. And this, this dog, this long legged, legged pug comes up and just pees on the face of this guy who just exploded. And here we get our, our first look at the celestial dragons. And I am, I got a lot of feelings on these characters, and, you know, the, the first thing they see, you know, you, you get, uh, we have uh, St. Charlia and St. Roswald. Um, who, they just, they look like astronauts. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're astronauts. The the, the, the St. Roswald has a bunch of medals on his suit of, uh, again, don't want to breathe the same air. They have a giant yeah, behind them walking behind, and they're just like, yeah. oh, another one bro broke, you know, so buy me a new one. And <laughs> it's just like... It's a whole pet aspect, which is so freaking dark, especially just like how they go like, ah, oh. and the girl, there's this girl uh, just like, ah, this one's no good. A man, grown man weeping about his family, a mere human. It makes me sick. And she just shoots him in the back. Yeah. And Luffy, you know, Hachi has to hold him, Luffy back. She wants a giant slave. He's like, no, no, you need to start with a human child. I don't want a weak slave. And it's just like, jeez. Yes. Yeah. Th this is your first look at the, the world nobles, the celestial dragons, and they are monsters. <laughs> yeah. They are. They are. And, and I feel like this is another thought of mine that was brewing. Uh, as well, well, of course, we'll see more and more of the celestial dragons over the course of the story. But I feel like, like Oda goes out of his way to make sure that they are objectively terrible in every situation that they are in. Like, I feel like... There's a lot about, like, One Piece's gray morality in terms of, like, the systems and the people who live within them, you know, you know, like, the, you know, good mm -hmm. pirates and bad pirates and good marines and bad marines, that kind of thing. The Celestial Dragons are objectively just, like, within no uncertain terms, like, the worst human beings. 
I mean, you can tell, it would get a little bit more history within these set of chapters, but you get the sense that these are people who have never had to do a thing in their life and yet they feel yeah. absolutely justified in doing whatever they feel like because of their birth, uh, their, yeah. how they were born. And Otis it is, says the real villains are rich people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> huh. Yeah, got that 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 one percent that uh, just thinks yeah, they can exactly. walk over everybody. No gray morality there. Just absolutely corrupted. Yeah, I feel like again. <laughs> I'm sorry, this, if you didn't think that there was any kind of greater meaning in the story, yeah. Look, it's just I don't a know what silly pirate anime. <laughs> it's a silly, it's a silly little pirate anime that now has human trafficking slaves and you know like a, a rich one percent class that rules above it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, with just, systems uh, in place to keep them in power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, hmm. hits a little different. <laughs> Funny uh, that. And, I, and we, we were told, you know, here at the start, like, don't mess with them. You don't want to mess with them. And then Papaku, you know, lays it out straight. Like, if you harm a celestial dragon, they will call in a special military force led by an admirable. And, you know, Luffy's like, you know, Aokiji, you know, but it could be a Kainu or a Kizaru as well. You don't know who. Because they're so close by, it's easy to deploy. And yeah, that too. Yeah, that's true. And I, actually, here we go. I wasn't sure how long it took us to learn about the why the celestial dragons are considered so important. And we find out it's because they have the blood of the creators. 800 years ago, 20 kings banded together to create the world government. Their descendants are the celestial dragons. And over time, their power has gotten out, out of control. That's how we end the chapter. It's like... Oh, well, there's our time gap that we have to... Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like... So we know the Void Century was 800 years ago, right? At this point. Yeah, I think so. Yes. yes. So we can extrapolate from that information that whatever happened at the end of the Void uh, Void Century was started the creation of the world government um, and, and putting in place the Celestial Dragons in power. So there's there's a lot about that that, you know... <laughs> even now that feels like that's basically all i know <laughs> um but i feel like it is sort of an important i feel like i was waiting for us to get to the celestial dragons because they're kind of the missing piece to like one the one piece world's like political setup because it is like the navy and the world government are like you know like they they serve to keep the celestial dragons in power mm-hmm. and it, yeah. it, it it's it says something where you could totally see vivi coming here who is part of a royal family, a royal family that's part of the world government, but they weren't one of the 20 kings that banded together to create the world government, so they're still lesser. And that's why Vivi's good, and these guys are still, like, absolutely terrible. If Vivi came here and tried to stop them, she would get shot, just like these guys, even despite her being a a princess. We'll talk in approximately 400 chapters about that. Oh, really? Oh, wow. (laughs) <laughs> oh, we'll, I'm just we'll extract. I have no idea, yeah. so I'm just going yeah, off you're, that. Like you're getting warmer. <laughs> you're getting warmer. <laughs> it, it really, like, I'm just going off that. That's it's. I'm just sort of explaining, like, this is why Vivi's kind of nice <laughs> because she's yeah, not. Yeah, a, yeah. She's not a celestial dragon. The relationship that the kingdoms that did not did not form the twenty. We'll we'll get to we'll get there. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 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 oh dear all right yeah yeah see this is this is that juicy lore man i, I mean that's why we're already we're two chapters through and we're at 40 minutes for us. oh god so uh, you know what we, would be really nice right now is if we introduced nine more characters yeah that's that's perfect so let's do that with chapter 498 the 11 supernovas and we see how uh, Bluno and Jabber are making money. Uh, they're performing a wild animal show. And that's, that's just adorable. It looks like... Is he is he on fire? Like, there's, like, smoke coming out of somewhere. It does kind of look like he's on fire, but I, Bluno can't make fire, so I think it's one of his Oh, he's, gates. like, jumping through a ring of fire because he's, a, yeah. like, a circus animal. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's raining at the same time, so it's kind of hard to tell, so... yeah. I wonder if he made like a made like a door <laughs> so that Chopper wouldn't burn himself. Maybe. <laughs> but we begin the chapter itself with Luffy using Bazooka on some random guy and just completely taking him out. Yeah, my stomach's full, so I won't lose to guys like you. <laughs> <laughs> and we get an explanation from Brooke and, and Chopper who are also taking out their own guys, like, where are all these bounty hunters come from? This is the third surprise attack. And yeah, it turns out like, yeah, there are bounty hunters here. They will recognize you. So they got to like 
stop, you know, not get caught by these bounty hunters. I just realized, like, they're in the hood. <laughs> they're getting jumped. Yeah. What's <laughs> you see that, like, they walk by a sign that says Navy Stay Out, and it's got, like, a, like the, like the corpse of a Navy man with just, like, all kinds of stuff. You know, like arrows and stuff, impaling him in blood soaked coat, and like, jeez, yeah. yeah I, I can't. I feel like we've taken a little bit of a turn. <laughs> yeah, because uh, if you go inland, the navy doesn't typically go there. So groves uh, one through twenty nine are basically lawless, and we get a proper map of uh, of Sabaudi where you know they landed at forty in the forty section where there's sightseeing, souvenirs, and if you go down to fifty, there's you know shipyard coding specialists, but you know, they're pirates, so they can't go there. That's not where they the guy trusts. The Navy base government port is in sixty, the hotels and etc. are in seventy. And then you got zero, ten, and oh, and you got thirty with the amusement park. Uh, then zero, ten, and twenty were all the lawless lands. It's like, yeah, I love, poor little choppers. Like, you couldn't have told us sooner. <laughs> <laughs> I do like there's like it's not generally clear cut, but it's it, it's 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 close enough. This is a get you an yeah, idea. Yeah, again, th- this is again some just really really fascinating world building here. Just like yeah, th- I feel like I feel like this is the first like like first location we've been to in One Piece where there's very clearly like a like. This is the bad part of town. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. And they got these bounty hunters like, you know, no wonder his bounty is 300 million. But there's, this is a chance of a lifetime because there's a ton of important pirates here right now. We should get at least one. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's our little <laughs> indication for later. But we arrive at the shop at the top of the roots in Grove 13. And this is the first time that Cami and Papagoo are actually meeting this uh, specialist. <laughs> they get there and it turns out it's like oh uh, it's Shaggy's ripoff bar like they're gonna yeah, announce, they're gonna announce their... yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Hachi goes in is like hey is Raleigh or Rayleigh or Shaky Shaggy here and this guy's just bleeding out saying I'll pay and this this woman is just beating the crap out of this guy and she has like a spider symbol on her uh, on her shirt and. Hard on her belt, and this is the bar owner and a former pilot. Pi- pirate. Yeah, I, I, I forgot her real name was uh, Shakuyaku. I just I just remember her as Shaki. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Shakuyaku. Okay, <laughs> she has a bit of a giraffe theme to her pants. Yeah, <laughs> giraffes are awesome, so she's got good taste. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> but she's excited to see uh, to see Shaki, and uh, uh, you know they're just they, they hang out a bit. It's like. And she's just sort of amazed that it's not often you see a mermaid on land. Are you Hachi's girlfriend? I love how Cammy's all like first freak out face and then blush. It's like, I'm not ready to be Hachin's wife. It's like, nobody mentioned marriage. <laughs> marriage yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, Shaki asks, like, can I get you guys something to drink? And then the, the, Brooke and Luffy, of course, those two are just already rummaging through stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but she uh, she's OK with it. And it's like, no, she'll rip you off. And then she's like, oh, it's on the house. And it's cotton candy, which, t- just, of course. <laughs> Chopper really feels just like the uh, just the wholesome little brother in this situation. <laughs> yeah, it, it it totally is. It's like, hey, how do you know what Chopper likes? Well, aren't you guys the Monkey Gang? Well, how do you know about me? It's like, ah, I keep myself informed because you are infamous. Although I didn't realize you had a skeleton in your crew, or that skeletons are alive. But yeah, she just rolls with it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I read an article about what happened on East Lobby. So how much of it is true? Did you pick a fight with the government? And Luffy's like, I don't care. Talking about it's a pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I love that Shaki takes it as like, oh, you know, you're a big man. You don't want to brag. <laughs> it's an interesting Monkey D. Luffy. You have the same name as Garb, the naval officer. Oh, that's my grandpa. It's like, ah, he used to chase me. And we find out Shaki, uh, Shaki of course, we used to be a pirate 40 years ago. Still looks good. <laughs> yeah. I was like, how old are you? <laughs> They were getting ready to ask, and she's like, "Ah, you came more prone here because uh, because they want to coat their ship, so you want to ask Rayleigh for the coating, but he isn't here." So, like, okay, well, we need to, we'll just wait till he comes back. Well, he hasn't been here for six months. <laughs> yeah, w- well, <laughs> huh? And he's like, ah, "I'm not worried about him going for long, going away for long stretches. Natural for an ex pirate. The specialist was a pirate too." Is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, huh, I guess we have to go find him. So he's probably somewhere in Groves 1 to 29, or he's, you know, not in Lawless Lands. He likes to go to the, the park. And Which it's like, just at me, like, everybody lights up. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the park. Let's go to the park. But Shocky's like, hey, wherever you go, be careful. Because uh, according to my contacts, including you guys, there are 11 people here with bounties of over 100 million on the island. 
So there yep. are nine others with bounties bigger than 100 million. Yeah. And then I, I love the explanation we get here because it really feels like the implications of like how wide the even just like how wide the Grand Line feels. Because uh, the Shaki explains like, you know, you chose one of seven sea routes when you went to the Grand Line. Uh, so like the pirates basically took all the other paths. Yeah, um, I, and, I like that like, idea because we just they we haven't mentioned the past since chapter like 100 or so. <laughs> yeah, so here we are introducing basically nine other characters roughly on the same level as the Straw Hats. <laughs> and wow, <laughs> that is that is interesting to see somebody on the same level as Luffy. Usually yeah. it's about a bit more powerful, I guess yeah. the, the stakes are higher, but they, these are actual legit rivals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and that the Sabaody Archipelago is basically like this is the convergent point for all of those different paths. Yeah. And so. turns out Luffy only has the second highest bounty. Yeah. He's on this Which island. Is, oh, dangerous. Oh, yes. So it's time yeah. to start meeting these nine other pirates. This is awesome but also terrifying because again, we just Oda's just dumping you with nine different characters <laughs> <laughs> with nine very interesting designs and Yes, he, yes. He, we first meet Capone Gang Beige uh, with yeah. 138 millions of the fire tank pirates. Very much a mafia design. He's a mafia boss. And of course, I so I, I went to the uh, the English dub of this episode just to like double check how some of the characters names are pronounced. And he, he just he just has that that thick New York accent in, in the dub. It's awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. And they even call him father. <laughs> like he's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so he's like, I don't I don't. I don't want to cause us, uh, you know, go, go shut her up. It's like, nah, we're real close to the, the headquarters, so we don't want to shut this woman up, this vulgar woman. And it turns out there's another one, Glutton Jewelry Bonnie with 140 million of the Bonnie Pirates. And she's just sitting on the table, piles of food, <laughs> legs spread, yep, scarfing yep, down yep. chicken and pizza at the same time. How vulgar indeed. <laughs> They're not fast enough. More pizza and just like, oh, somebody to rival... Uh, Luffy's sunk hunger, but that that's a that's a fun, unique design. Like yeah, all all of these characters do, but like the getting these two first, you're just like, oh, okay, these will be people to remember. Yeah, it's also great with her because you're so used to like the Nami design or the weird yeah, design, but again, yeah. Jewelry Bonnie here looks significantly different while still being conventionally attractive you assume yeah. when she's not stuffing her face <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then we have another captain magician basil hawkins of the hawkins pirates and he's very much about fate uh one of yeah. his crewmates are like this, this waiter got spaghetti on my clothes like no no it was their fate i'm sorry my man threatened you killing is unlucky for me today so yeah <laughs> he, he'd fit in right with blackbeard's crew that's for sure and then we get just like a massive explosion somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, we, we got a, a fight going on. So, uh, hey, if we're going to fight, let's save it for the other side of the wall. Uh, as we meet two others, we'll start with how they introduce them. And uh, oh, gosh, we've got actually I'll just go with the first the first guy. Roar of the Sea scratching a poo from the he's from the Grand Line and part of the Long Arm tribe. The on-air pirates captain, and this guy's design is wild. Chinese yeah. outfit design, braided hair. His teeth are like p piano keys, and he has two elbows, two sets of elbows on a single arm to make his arms yeah. really long. That's Definitely wild. One of, one of the weirder ones. <laughs> yeah, it is a striking design. But the one that catches my attention is Eustace Captain Kid who's the one that actually has the higher bounty than Luffy with 315 mm -hmm. million berries from the South blue. And as soon as I saw this guy's done, I remembered kid, but I, for I forgot how his design and just how kind of weirdly on point it is because no, he's, he's got, he's an awesome one. Of, one of my favorite designs of, uh, of the supernovas. Yeah. But also his face is just straight up Beelzebub from T Toriyama's Sandland. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> he he looks like a devil. Yeah, if you if you look up because uh, we got this big Sandland push with the 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 I think the anime coming. We got the game coming. Beelzebub, yeah. the 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 little pink guy, <laughs> the demon, <laughs> is basically <laughs> this design in the face, just yeah. you know, odified, and it's like, God, that works. <laughs> it works. Yeah, I love his all of his big old coat. Yeah, 
He looks pretty sweet, I gotta say. But over in Grad Grove 21, the Mad Monk is going wild, where we see uh, another pirate stopping this Mad Monk uh, from fighting another guy with a sword and a axe mace. This yep. is <laughs> Red Flag X Drake of the Drake oh, Pirates. Uh, real quick, because this this tripped me up until I watched the anime. Uh, the X is pronounced uh, Diaz. Like the Spanish for 10. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, Diaz so Drake. That's, in, that's yeah. an interesting translation. Yeah, or, or that that's how it's... it's it's. So I, I guess it's intended to be the Roman numeral yeah. uh, 10. Uh, but yeah, in, in Japanese, it's it's X with like uh, Diaz written above it. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's I like, mean, he has an X on his chest. He has an X for his beard. <laughs> yeah, I, I had no idea for the longest time. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have guessed. And turns out Drake is a fallen naval officer. God, when his head's down like that, he looks so like a Bloodborne character. <laughs> he does. He looks like the hunter. <laughs> yeah. That's when we get the Mad Monk uh, Eurogay. Eurogay? Oh, uh, Eurogay? Uh, Eurogay, yeah. Eurogay. Yeah. That, he's the one I was the least like sure about. So I was like, let me check the anime to make sure. Yeah. yeah. Turns out he's from Sky Island, a fallen monk. Pir- pir- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I didn't... I mean, you can see his wings. Yeah. Yeah. He has the wings. He, he definitely looks like one of the monks. It's, it's pretty wild. And then we have one of the uh, kid, pi- the fighters on kids crew, Murder Machine Killer with 162. Yeah. <laughs> Just a love, mask. I love that. Jeez. Definitely intimate. He's got that long hair too. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah. wild design. Yeah. And, and it's interesting too that like all of these characters are on their separate crews except for Killer. Yes. It took me a while to like, are these guys all on the same cruise or not? But no, no, it's including the Straw Hats. There are, I believe, nine crews, correct? Because we got uh, Zoro yeah, and yeah, Luffy because together. Yeah, Zoro on one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nine crews in total. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, again, no, I, I remember feeling so overwhelmed and just like, for the longest time, I could not remember half of these characters because it's just shotgun. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I, I know certain ones stand out for me at least, uh, just because I well, know some are more important later. <laughs> let's let's get to the last one uh, before we before we talk about him as a whole. <laughs> yeah, so there was a, actually an observer. He's like, ah, I was just getting good, and uh, somebody asks, like, actually, he just calls out, "Hey Drake, how many people have you killed?" <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, this is where we meet uh, from the North Blue, the Heart Pirates captain, the Surgeon of Death. Trafalgar Law with 200 million. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I think out of all of them, <laughs> he might stand out the most. Law's the fan favorite. Like, he yeah. he just is. <laughs> Law is the fan favorite. <laughs> yeah. He, he just became the fan favorite. I just, yeah. I'm yeah. aware of that from this point on. And uh, although I, I do forget a lot of details for him. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to get, get those again. Yeah. It's definitely. The the supernovas are really fascinating to me because it is again like we're just like boom you got you just threw like nine new characters at you in the span of like a half chapter, <laughs> but this is this is kind of Oda kind of sowing the seeds for again you know sowing the seeds for way later, um, where like not all of these characters will be important to the same degree, but like I think it is it is fascinating that like here we are at but the halfway point of the grand line and now here's here's basically everybody else who kind of like had their own adventures similar to Luffy's Mm -hmm. and made it and made names for themselves. And as Shaki puts it, the uh, fleets of pirate ships that set out from the grand line are now reduced to a countable number. And remember how I said there's no tournament arc in one piece. Turns out I'm kind of wrong. The grand line (laughs) itself is a tournament is a tournament. Yeah. Yeah. So the pirates who've made it here are truly a select few, an elite, so uh, somewhere among these might be the one to lead the next generation generation of pirates. And if you want to know why Kid's bounty is higher than Luffy's, it's because his crew actually slaughters and pillages innocent peoples. He's, he's... So, okay, so the only ones who are real pirates. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Well, I love um, then Luffy is just like, well, okay, if the town's that dangerous, like, is the coding guy going to be okay? <laughs> eh, he's one of us. He'll be fine. Besides, he's about a hundred times stronger than you boys. It's like, it's like oh <laughs> my God. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. What a chapter, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I, I reading this one was like, oh, we knew this one was going to be long. <laughs> yep. 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 We got, we got a lot of lore. We got, slavery <laughs> we've got new characters now, oh my god yeah. yeah 
Do you have an <gasps> SPS? Not really worth mentioning. It's just t- talking about how the circular rainbows actually can happen, and we get a science lesson from Oda. So cool. That's that's it's good funny. to see that that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's I, I honestly didn't know that. So cool. Huh. All right. Chapter four hundred and ninety nine, Sabodi Park, where we get the giraffe slide. <laughs> yeah. See, and, that, this is just adorable. Yeah, that that's cute. Good, good on you, Kaku. And it's fun to see the ki- the kids having fun. Yeah. Why is this adorable? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. a, that's the that's the big question there. Like, yep. the 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 CP nine is the wholesome bit of these set of chapters. There's something yeah, wrong that's, going on. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God. Oh gosh, but uh, yeah, Shaki's just saying. Well. Good luck finding them because uh, the, sh- the Navy should definitely knows some big shot rookies have landed in the archipelago. But uh, hey, right now you're in luck. The, you still are in luck. Despite all these people being here, the net headquarters doesn't have time for you. They're busy with something else, which, hmm. <laughs> I yeah, wonder what the, that I, could I, be. I missed that the first time and I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Is, is she saying what I think she's saying? <laughs> oh, she's definitely saying that. We, we, oh, boy. we know what they're busy with, so we just don't know the full... <laughs> scale oh of god it. <laughs> wow god there's so many moving parts <laughs> just avoid making a scene and you'll be fine and that's when the two guys that uh, luffy beat up earlier goes to a guy named peterman the hound pets boss of a uh, traffickers they kidnap people yeah. yeah yeah and it's like hey there's straw hat luffy and he has a mermaid he was with she took off her shoes and she didn't have any feet she had fins so yeah and they're like, they get a 10% of what they get for the mermaid. So they just deals upon deals. So Cammy is now a target. Yep. And they make it to Sabote Park. And of course, they're excited. They're like, oh, yeah, we got a search room. But no, it's a full on park. And honestly, this looks like a pretty sweet theme park. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of glad we're getting a little bit of a reprieve from all of the crunchy world building because we're just watching them goof off and have fun. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's the first time, like, Cammy's freaking out for a good reason this time with her weird face. <laughs> it's, you know, it's yeah, like a Ferris exactly. wheel and so ex- ex- excited to get there. So it is, as you said, it's just a lot of fun. We get them riding on roller coasters. They get them riding on the uh, the, the merry-go-round. They get sick on the teacups, which is pretty yep. great. And then, you know, Cammy's crying because she's so happy that they uh, got, finally got to ride the Ferris wheel. And it's like, you know, I'll never forget this. I've never gotten the chance to come here. And it's only happening because you are so strong. Yeah, I feel like so we can probably infer like because, you know, at the start of the set of chapters, you know, Kami was like, oh, I always wanted to go to an amusement park. But, you know, and, and Papa was like, uh, don't maybe don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I think the implication, you know, now that we see that <laughs> some of them got kidnappers after her. Yeah. And we got the probably for that reason. And we even got young Hachi is like, oh, my childhood dreams are coming back, too, because like. You know, they long for, fishmen long for this place when they're little. They see this, and they oh, want to ride yeah. on it. And we even get to see young Hachi and uh, Q, and I actually I think it's the entire Arlong gang right there. Oh my god! Wow, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that there's Karubi, there's Chu, and I'm pretty sure the one on the far right is is Arlong. So holy crap! Oh my god, <laughs> I missed that. Yeah, and I. Mm, there, there's an extra little bit to that. I think we'll get to in this chapter or the next. Um, but yeah, no, there's definitely. Like Robin said, like the, 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 we've got, got some dark history here. <laughs> oh yes, and I love I gotta love how Brooke is just nervous about going into the the haunted house and oh that's great and like, uh, we just got out of one <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah they're just all having fun. Well enough having fun. <laughs> it's time yeah. to go back to Grove Twenty Four where the uh, oh gosh I'm already forgetting their names. A rouge. Uh, a rouge, yeah. Yeah, a rouge. Seeing a celestial dragon. He always carries this giant pillar with him, which is yeah. unreal. <laughs> and we meet St. Charlos, who is r- literally riding on top of a man in chains while women in Slave Leia outfits are chained up behind him. Yep, yep. Just, again, I feel like... <laughs> and then, you know, he starts, like, smacking his slave for going too slow. And it's just like, I, I feel like, oh man, and this this whole next scene in general. Like, oh, again, yeah. in no uncertain terms, these are just like the scum of the earth. <laughs> yeah. It's it, it's just like, why are you moving? And he's pointing out to these guys, these guys literally carrying a man bleeding out on a stretcher. It's like, I'm sorry, sir, but please overlook it. There's a hospital right here and we got to hurry or he's going to die. And he's like, he just kicks a man off of the stretcher. 
And Aroge is just still smiling as he's watching this. It's like, well, they, well, well, they do as they please. How he's taking it all in. And you, you, it's interesting trying to get a feel for this man. Yeah. Uh, you definitely get the sense, like, even the other pirates who are here are just like, again, like, we're not here to cause trouble. Like, basically, like, kind of like, do as do as you say. Right. Yeah. And this guy, just, this guy literally has snot coming out of his nose. And mm-hmm. it's like, hey, which is more important, showing respect or saving a commoner's life? Yeah, literally a snot-nosed brat. <laughs> yeah. And the guy is just like, the, the bodyguard is like, the lives of the commoners depend on the celestial dragons. Like, mm. And he sees the nurse and he's just like, wife, this is yeah. my wife. She'll be my wife number 13. It's like, I'm tired. And I'm tired of wives one through five. So return them to the rabble. And wow. The, yeah. And yeah. The, the, the guy, the woman is trying to protest. It's like, wait, I know. And, and then all of a sudden turns out she's engaged. Her, her fiance comes up and it's like, no, no, she's engaged to me. And he gets shot. Yeah. So how dare you stand in my presence? And then like, yeah, no, it just. <laughs> yeah it's like jeez and he just leans over he's like are you complaining take her to the harbor and just just carries her away it's like good god yeah and now that we know that you are not supposed to move you basically do not move in the while well, you're in the presence of a celestial dragon so of course here comes just Zoro strutting down the street <laughs> <laughs> drinking because he knows nothing about any of this <laughs> Yep, and yep. Uh, we have a poo scene of this. The mafia guy Beach. sees this. Yeah, Beach. Yes. And he's just strolling up to the guy. He's like, what, you need directions? And everybody's freaking out. The guy immediately sh- sh- uh, takes a shot at Zoro, who dodges it and is getting yeah. ready to slice him up. But that's when B- uh, Bonnie comes out, grabs him by the head, and is like, what a second, a little kid. And she just starts crying my brother my did my brother die brother brother and she's like wait i hit him for a moment i thought he dodged it was just my imagination you see zoro's head covered in blood and it's like well if he's dead it's all right so yeah whatever and it's like hey why'd you and zoro's just like why'd you interfere why am i i'm covered in uh, tomato juice it's like (laughs) hey you idiot you're gonna bring an admiral down on all of us don't do anything yeah, and of course, poor Zoro legitimately didn't know. He was not there for the explanation, so. Yeah. And of course, just all the other uh, all the other rookies are just like, that guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The one's like, uh, Bonnie just averted a disaster, and uh, I was like, yeah, I heard they were nuts, and then we got the, the, the fake guy. He's like, ah, I didn't see death in his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Pooh's like, I, I, ah, he's a monster, and Eroge is just like, huh, is this is only the first mate. His captain must be something else. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I love all of the buildup that we've got, We've all that we've seen of the Celestial Dragons and how, you know, they're kind of at the top of the food chain in the society, and Zoro almost killed one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I also like how the supernovas are sort of observing each other and sort of taking stock. Right, yeah, stock. they're all sizing, sizing each other up. Especially because Zora's like, I'm going to take this guy to the hospital. It's like, he's a total stranger. Who ever heard of a pirate helping people? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. And it doesn't stop because, hey, Usopp, Frankie, and uh, and and Sanji are just hanging out, having a good time. It's just like, it, it, it sounds like they're having fun. And they get a call. And uh, it's Chopper because Cammy got kidnapped. Off screen while that was happening, Cammy got uh, kidnapped. Yep. Oh, no. A team of kidnappers took her. They're going to sell her. She'll be a slave. And it's all, all our fault. This is just still Chopper talking. And uh, we see her like, getting taken away. We should split up. And it's like, no, no. Sanji immediately has a plan. He's in. He's in go mode. It's like, yep. where are you? Where are you? Wait there. There are pros for this sort of thing. I'm calling in the flying fish riders. And it's like, <laughs> they had a freaking point. Of course they had yeah. a point. Of course. Yep. It wasn't just... It's never just a silly little side diversion. Yeah. Or, you know, you might be forgiven for thinking, oh, it's just so we can get reintroduced to Hachi and get in, like, yeah. learn about all this. Like, no. Or that it there's... was a build up to one of my favorite gags. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's oh, but no, so it's... layered. I feel I feel like it's relatively fast, though. Like, we got them introduced. We helped to them. Or, you know, you know, Sanchez calling in the favor, like, five chapters after we dealt with the uh, whole thing. Mm-hmm. Like it is moving and yeah. oh my gosh, 
I love these chapters. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is amazing. This is one of the this is one of the best episodes of this podcast we've ever had. <laughs> I mean, I love Water Seven. I love Enos Lobby. For a while, I thought Enos Lobby and that was my favorite. This might be beating it, honestly. Yeah, and we're in we still got a little bit left. Yeah, there's still we're still in the first act, really. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But hey, we made it. Chapter five hundred. The Embers of History. What a title, man. <laughs> yeah. And that's when we get to uh, see what Khalifa, a secretary, is doing. She's uh, cleaning up the town with her bubbles. Yeah. Again, it's just, it's funny watching them just all doing good deeds. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get started with just a close up of Duval. It's like, ah, it's me, handsome. <laughs> handsome. It's just like, oh, geez. <laughs> There's still, and he still can't wink. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, I love, you know, Sanji's like, you're late f- flying fish riders. And I love that Duval calls him young master. But then he's like, we're the rosy life riders now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. And he's like, I just visited a town full of cute, cute girls, but I wasn't the hit I expected. I can f- fix your bone structure, but I can't I can't perform miracles. <laughs> just just incredible comedic timing. <laughs> I know, especially after one of our friends just got kidnapped. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So Duvall already has. I, it's like, all right, I got this. I just have to find the mermaid before they sell her. Hey, it's like our backyard. I have ideas. Let's go. Yeah. And. Chopper's sitting there worried about what's going to happen. I love that there's like a public fo- like phone booth. Like yeah, we have public everything. transponder snails. That's that's wonderful. Yes. And uh, Brooke is just calmly drinking tea. It's like, how can you be so calm? It's like, Kami's been synapsed. She'll be a slave for life. It's like, hey, we're just doing what Sanji told us to do. If you, you, we could still have to wait no matter what. So we might as well just, you know, be comfortable. And uh, they all arrive and there's like, <laughs> they're just completely like Brooke is slumped Where over. Where did Chopper get the sunglasses? <laughs> I know, just kicking it up on there, eating his his his, his cotton candy. <laughs> Brooke's just sitting ass up. <laughs> it's freaking wonderful, and Chopper's all depressed. Like I got mad at us. Yeah, well, it's like now it's time to be in, to be serious. So let's split yeah. up and find out where they're going because uh we gotta we gotta pick up uh, luffy and uh and uh, hachi so let's let's go and sanji's upset because the writing on his bull is like you should have gotten something faster <laughs> and uh like i should have gotten on the front flying fish too <laughs> yeah <laughs> sanji. Poor sanji. And then I, I love i love how dark this is where so the Luffy and hachi uh they go looking for kami at a human shop just straight up on yeah. the sign. Just humans. Buy humans here. And we see a bunch of yeah. them in just glass cages. And they're like, we got a mermaid. And they just got like a man in a mermaid costume. <laughs> Hila- hilarious, but so, Dark. so messed up. Yeah. That, that, God, that really is it's just, there's levity here. But like the implications and not even really implications. It's, it's, it's the text. There's no subtext. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So... Worst possible scenario where we got Luffy with a 300 million berry bounty on his head going around shouting for Cammy. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody's taking notice of, of him. Meanwhile, Papagoo is completely uh, beside himself because it's my fault. I, the amusement parks are like buffets for human traffickers. I know how much they want mermaids. And yet I left her alone because I wanted to go get ice cream with the others. Mm-hmm. And it's the last thing I spoke to her. Luffy's just like, maybe I don't get it, but she was happy. So isn't a good thing she went to it. And it's like, no. Well, so, I feel like the second that the second she says, it's been my dream. Like Luffy's ride or die for you. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. we're going to make that dream happen. And it's like, to tell the truth. It isn't good for a fish man or a mermaid to be on this Island at all. But Hachi wanted there to help is. you guys no matter what. Yep. Yep. And, yep. and Hachi's like, no, no, don't say anything. It's like, no, no. I, they need to know because the enemies aren't just human traffickers. It's all the humans that live on the archipelago. Uh-huh. And that's when we go back to Nami and Robin who have all kinds of uh, like, oh, brand new outfits for them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and we learned that 200 years ago, the world was a different place because the fishmen and the mermaid tribes were classified as fish and persecuted by humans all over the world. Everyone looked down on him, but and Nami's like, "Wait, fishmen are powerful," and it's like, "Doesn't matter. Doesn't beat the the strength that comes in the numbers." So until the world government declared friendly relations with Fishman Island two hundred years ago, 
slavery and human trafficking, trafficking were just accepted part of society, and that, that culture still exists in this archipelago. Might have disappeared everywhere else, but it's still here. The subtext is just the text. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Again, I must reiterate. So this is really fascinating because I was wondering when we were going to get to this. Because I remember a feeling in the live action show that I was like, I was a little, uh, you know, kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other about like how they kind of like amplified sort of the racial tensions of the Fishman in, in the Netflix show. Um, because I, I kind of felt like that they were playing their cards too early. I think you need to club people over the head with this. I do. I, well, yeah, no, I, I think it's more so just that, like, for where they were at in the story, I, right. I feel like it's it's really cool. Well, maybe cool is not the right word, but I think it makes for a really good storytelling that we did get. We got introduced to the Fishmen as villains. Yes. And other than other than Hachi, really, who was just kind of a goofball, um, like, like they were, again, like unequivocally villains because you didn't really understand, like, the context of of really why they were doing what they were doing. And we still don't really know the whole story, but we now know, you know, some almost 500 chapters later that, like, there was this history about, like, like y you think about all of Arlong's speeches and the way that he felt about humans. He felt that way for a reason because, you know, they were a prosecuted class. And, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> again, it feels very Arlong much like Arlong has some retroactive world. depth to him that yeah. may all of a sudden makes everything he did and it's still despicable no doubt about it because of the people yes, harmed yes. but it's 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 also it's just like they're being literally sold into slavery literally yeah, see it, how the slaves are treated and not even considered human considered yeah, yeah, fish yeah, exactly. for the longest yeah. time and and that that it was a mere like 200 years ago you know like of course that that is a long time for like attitudes to change and stuff but that is also not a lot of time to where you can feel like there's still a lot of holdovers from how I mean, society used to be, which again, the subtext is the text. <laughs> it's been a hundred, maybe 150 years at this point for us. And yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm getting at. I feel like the, the, the amount of time that it's been is not, that is not an accident. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, Hoda's, Hoda's done his homework and it's, it's, it's fascinating. This is, it, yeah, this, this is this is really where it starts to hit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's best way you could put it. Yeah. Oh boy, and Luffy, <laughs> Luffy just cutting through it, learning how this is on this island uh, himself from Papagoo and Hachi being just like, I want to help you, but I just caused trouble. It's like, what are you talking about? You haven't done anything wrong. You are our friends now, and I don't care what it takes. We're going to save her. So stop crying. Yeah, there's, that's it. That's, that's like the appeal of Luffy's character in a nutshell to me. Like all of this, there's so much like just complicated like tensions and, you know, relationships and, and you know, themes of racism and, and discrimination, stuff like that. And all it takes is just having a character who can say, I don't care about any of that. I'm going to save my friend. Yes. And that, that is like the genius of Luffy's character, I think. Absolutely, because you see him, you have this, you see this injustice, and you have this pure force of freedom. I don't know, exactly. say, ostensibly good, but he is a pirate. There's, there's those mm -hmm. connotations, but it's freedom for him. So it's this pure source of freedom that yeah. is just ready to just pound against any injustice he sees. And it was not only just for Robin, but this when we when we have the common joke of you just became Luffy's friend and he will tear down governments to help you. Yeah, <laughs> this is what we're getting at. <laughs> it's not a joke. <laughs> it is not a joke. It, it is happening. literally, it is literally what Luffy is all about. Yeah. So, oh boy, but we we get to Grove One, uh, the human auction hall, where uh, Peterman oh. has, <laughs> oh, where Peterman has uh, definitely uh, dropped off Cammy, and we see everybody filtering in, including. The Roswald and uh, uh, Shalria, uh, who are, of course, with Charlos. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're ready to bid on more humans. And that's when we find out that also Kid and Machine, Machine Killer are here as well. Yeah. <laughs> His whole crew. Oh, dear. Yeah, I, I, love, I love this line from Kid, I think, is like it says the whole thing. Where he's just like compared to the high and uh, to compared to the mighty and their simple pure hearts, the world's villains are much more humane. Scum rule the world and give birth to more scum. Don't they know that? 
we may mean to do harm, but we're sort of cute gu- by comparison, aren't we, killer? And that just, <laughs> that's the whole thing, is just, like, they're pirates, but, like, the people, you know, against the pirates are also just, like, again, they're scum. Like, they're, yeah. it's, <laughs> like, Kid just acknowledges the kind of the hypocrisy of it all. And I yeah. just, like. While also saying, hey, cool. if we see something interesting, we should buy them. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he's just as bad <laughs> yeah but then uh he spots law who has like a bear faced guy a bear mask guy next to him with a sword yeah. <laughs> this is interesting <laughs> and uh he just looks at him he's like he got he's got bad manners he just law just looks back at him and flicks him off that's awesome <laughs> it's just great <laughs> oh that is that is good stuff yep and yep. uh we get into the auctioneer's waiting room, so uh, we f- we'll find out our auctioneer is named Disco. I was like, oh, our main attraction is a giant. Just leave it to me. I'll make sure to get a good price. Oh, no, we got a mermaid now, so expect some ferocious bidding. And Cammy is still being mm. resistant. It's like, oh, Hot John's going to come and beat you up. I also I wanted to point out, because I don't think we... I don't think they really make a point of it, but like the fact that they're also like selling giants and stuff, and that we've, we've seen giants and, you know, kind of know that they're like, you know, they're kind of rare. They're kind of, you know... Also, they also don't seem to be generally a part of society. Um, mm-hmm. So the fact that they're also probably being hunted down and sold on the black market. I mean, the giants the giants on uh, Enos Lobby were literally tricked by the government. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> not slaves, but definitely not considered equals. Exactly, yeah. Kami is just resistant, and the guy, this our disco, slaps her across the face and starts kicking, uh, kicking at her f- face. It's like, no, no, don't do that. It'll damage the price. Don't care about her. They just, the fact that they get less for her. Yeah. And, you know, she's, you know, Kami, full belief in, you know, the Hotchin's gonna, he's gonna come and beat you up. And then I, you know, Disco's just like, yeah, she's talking talk back. And then he just passes out. Freaks out, passes out. Also, dark line is like, if you're gonna kick him, kick the stomach or someplace hidden. Right. Not, not the face, which, oh boy. Uh, that, yeah. that says a lot. <laughs> yeah, it does. Kami doesn't sure, isn't sure what happened to this guy. And uh, all of a sudden, this with this giant that we see is like, hey, old man, don't play dumb. That was you, wasn't it? That hockey. Who are you? Eh, just an old man who coach ships and likes young ladies. And this oh, is when we man. meet Rayleigh. Turns out his name is Silver's Rayleigh, the yep. Pirate King's right arm, the first mate yep. of Gold Roger. I love the buildup because I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is when we meet Rayleigh. Um, but like. You sort of like like Shocky mentions like oh yeah you know he was a pirate too, uh, and then just like I didn't realize that the reveal that he was Gold Roger's first mate like it didn't come up until his on screen appearance and now now suddenly the fact that Shocky said oh yeah he's like a hundred times stronger than you guys, <laughs> <laughs> yep all of a sudden makes complete sense yeah. and and we got a new seems term to... with hockey yeah oh that wasn't the first time we heard it um, oh right. It was um, back on Shanks, uh, the Shanks and Whitebeard meeting. Shanks did the same thing, uh, mm. and they and uh, he called it hockey back then too. So whatever right. Shanks did, Rayleigh can do the same thing apparently, which which is not too surprising considering Shanks was on his crew. Right. <laughs> so. this, is, this is something that has to do with you know like <laughs> is this part of Gold Roger? Like it's interesting that we're, yeah, it, it, it seems limited this, so far to the Rogers pirates. Yeah, that we're kind of getting this in bits and pieces. I just. I love that, that, like, the first time we see him on screen is just like, oh, he can do the same thing that Shanks did, that he can just knock people out, apparently, and then just, like, boom, here he is. And I just, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to more of this, but I love the idea, and we saw this, you know, thinking about Whitebeard, too, of, like, Gold Roger, he died 20 years ago, right? I think, like, yeah, yeah 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, 20 years ago. The story. So, like, that wasn't that long of a time ago. Like, like the people who were still a part of, like, that generation are still around. Like, they're old, but... They're there. Like, they're not They're not all dead. And so seeing characters like Whitebeard and now Rayleigh and, um, you know, you know, Shaki, you know, waxing poetic about how she used to get chased by Garp. Mm. It's just, like, all the old folks who were there for during Roger's time. Like, I don't know. There's something so cool about it that it is, like, we are seeing more and more of these characters who were... They were there during the height of it all, of, of like, this legendary era. Yeah. And just to see a hint of what they saw and what they, they did is fantastic. And it makes you wonder like, all right, what silly thing happened that Rayleigh got caught? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Cause you see him have the collar, collar, like there's no way he got caught legit. So yeah. (laughs) 
then the yeah the more you think about it you're just like okay so the the, the first mate was here and he's like i'm just gonna let myself get you know sold into slavery <laughs> yeah it, mm. it very much has that feel of the chapter titles where garp gets hit by axe hand morgan because <laughs> just because he fell asleep yeah, 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 exactly. So it's just, I don't know. This man is, is he's level 100 here in this, like, level 50 area. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, we do have an SPS, uh, mostly minor things, but I do want to mention the first one where the, this reader uh, writes in saying, When I went to Kyoto, this man gave me a One Piece poster and a copy of the, vo- of co- of the cover of Volume 6. He was a taxi driver, so is he your uncle or something? Uh, and he's like, that was most likely my uncle. <laughs> he was doing that. Oh! He said he was only doing that to promote my manga. Oh my god. <laughs> the company had to ask him to tone it down, but he's still cruising around Kyoto somewhere. If you end up with a taxi with him, tell him I said hi. That's awesome. Just wow. you can randomly get Oda's uncle as a to- taxi driver. Yeah, that's great. I, if I remember right, uh, Oda, he's from Kumamoto, which is like way south. So I'm kind of surprised that his, his uncle is in Kyoto. You know, not, yeah. not that that's like a huge thing, but I was like, oh, you know, that's further away than I would have thought. Yeah, for sure. What an incredible set. <laughs> I, I think this is the longest we've talked about a, a set of chapters in a long time. I feel so. Yeah, we're coming up here on an hour and a half. <laughs> Believe it or not, if you haven't read it with before, I'm assuming most of you are ahead of us. It only gets better. <laughs> it only gets better. Yeah, no, this is, again, this 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 is maybe the singular best run of 100 chapters. <laughs> From yeah. 500 to 600 <laughs> is is maybe the greatest run in the entire manga. <laughs> For sure. So, so. Uh, yeah, with that, I believe we've said all we've wanted to say about chapters 496 to 500 of One Piece. Thank you so much for listening. And you can find all of my ramblings and stream VODs over at BitNerd Games on YouTube or BitNerd with an underscore at the end on Twitter. And Brandon, where can everyone find you at? I'm at Brandon Bovia on Twitter talking about uh, anime manga games at my job and... I'm just excited to talk more about One Piece and just this, we're getting into the really good stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yep. boy, yes. <laughs> so if you'd like to help us out more, you can support the podcast over at patreon.com slash Derek Bittner. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-B-I-T-N-E-R to listen to the next episode ad-free three days early. And make sure to return next time as we discuss chapters 501 to 505 of One Piece. So until then, my friends, bye. Remember to take life one piece at a time. It's settled. I'm making you my new wife. Very good, sir. I shall make arrangements to send her to the Holy Land as your 13th wife. By the by, I've grown quite weary of wives one through five lately. Have them sent back to live with the commoners. Of course, sir, as you wish. Please don't do this! I beg you! What are you doing? She's my fiance! You can't just come here and. How dare you speak to me when you should be kneeling!